What's up everyone, and welcome back to my Robot Survival game. In the very first video I made about this game, I promised that a Scarecrow wouldn't just be a Scarecrow, it would be a Scarecrow with a gun. Well today's the day I finally follow through with that promise and implement the first defense, the Scarecrow. Or as I like to call it, the super cool automatic robot exterminator, Crow. Let's jump right in. In my last video, I spent way too long working on the grass, and I got plenty of suggestions on how to improve it even more, so I wanted to add a few small things before I moved on. I ended up decreasing the size of the grass, as well as the amount that spawns across the world. This improved performance by a ton, and I think it actually looks better, so that's a win-win. There's still plenty to do with the grass, like adding color and size variations, level of detail, adding fog, but that's not what this video is about. We're here to see the newest addition to the game, the Scarecrow. Creating the Scarecrow was a process, but I'm going to take you through it step by step. I wanted to start with something easy and just build from there, so the first thing I did was make a placeholder for the turret. Just a simple cube and cannon is all I needed to start implementing some mechanics. The first one being the ability to lock onto enemies. But we don't want it shooting an enemy from anywhere, so I added a range that the enemy has to be in before the turret locks on. If you've seen my video about making the first enemy, you know that for the enemy's detection I used a bunch of ray cast. This was dumb, don't do that. For the turret, I wanted to do something that was way better. So I added a collider around it that is adjusted based on its range, and if an enemy enters the range, it's then added to a list. The turret then cycles through the list and finds the enemy closest to it to fire at. I started by having it always target the enemy closest to it, but I figured that wouldn't be very useful if it always is locking onto different targets, so instead I change it to lock onto the closest enemy and stay on that until it's either out of range or killed. I like this much better. I also added some customizable parameters, so you can easily change the range and the rate of fire. This is going to make it so much easier to add new defenses, and it will also help with something that I have planned for later that I'm very excited about. But we still got some things to do first, like make the bullets actually do damage. This wasn't too hard, I just had to add a collider and a little code and it works great. Oh you don't think it's obvious it's doing damage? What about if I add a health bar? I've made plenty of health bars before, so this was an easy add. Now a health bar will appear above the enemy when it takes damage, then will disappear after a few seconds. I also made it so that the health bar will always be looking at you, so it's easier to see. And the last touch I made was that looking at an enemy whose health is not full will also make the health bar appear. This way you can always tell how damaged an enemy is without having health bars everywhere on screen. So now that the turret's all set up to attack the enemy, it's only fair if the enemy can attack back. But first I had to fix the enemy script. Like I said before, my current method of detection is terrible. It's very inefficient, and it still won't detect everything correctly. So I had to rewrite my code to use the same method that I used for the turret. Normally in my videos, if things are boring to talk about, I just brush over them like, this was simple, I just did it. But I wanted to emphasize how bad my original code was. I'm sure some of you can tell, I'm not a pro at this. I'm improving as I go, but it's amazing how bad some of the things I made just two months ago are. I basically had to make a new enemy code from scratch. And while it definitely works better, and it is way more efficient, it's pretty hard to notice that I changed anything. But since I was changing everything anyways, I can make it possible to target things other than the player, like the turret. Wow, it works great! I made it so their targeting algorithm was the same as the turrets. It would stick to one enemy until it's out of range or dead. The only exception is that right now only 4 enemies can actually attack the player at the same time. As you recall, this led to enemies just standing around waiting for their time. So to improve that, I made it so if too many enemies were attacking the player, the rest would always be searching for a new target. So if you bring a bunch of enemies around a turret, some will leave you to attack it. And now that the enemies can attack the turret, I made it so if its health hits 0, it'll stop firing and the enemies will move on to their next target. But as you might have noticed, the turret does not disappear. I don't want to destroy your defenses when they die. This would be really annoying if you had to completely rebuild your entire base after every attack. Instead, I'm going to implement a way to repair them. But not yet. First I had to make some new models. Starting with the bullets. I made a pretty basic model and I put it in the game and I think that looks pretty acceptable for now. I then made it craftable, where again I ran into the problem where my passcode was unreadable and required some major updates. But this was simple, I just did it. Now you might be asking, why a bullet is made out of rocks? And that's because that's what the enemies are currently made out of. So I decided it was time to add a new resource to my game, that being scrap metal. Since the world is full of robots and tech, scrap metal will be very important. So now the robots will drop metal scraps instead of rocks, which I think makes much more sense. And now that you can craft bullets the right way, I wanted to make it so the turrets could only fire if they had bullets to fire. For this I had to make a new interaction on the turret that opens an ammo inventory. This inventory can only take an ammo, and when the turn shoots, it will take a bullet away from this inventory. And now that that mechanic's done, I've put it off long enough. I'm gonna make the Scarecrow model. I started by sketching a Scarecrow that I thought looked pretty good, and when I went to model it, it did not look very good. 
so I decided to mix up my approach. Instead of making it from scratch, I realized I could just take the top half of the robot model and put it on a post, and I think this was a good start, but it needed a few more tweaks. So I added some straw to the lower half of the body and gave him a hat, looking somewhat okay now. Then I tried to give him some clothes and decided that was never going to happen with my current skill set. But I did realize that since it is a robot, it doesn't need clothes, just paint. So I added color to the chest and arms, and now it looks like a Mountie. Oh well, I think you can tell enough what it is. I'll definitely be coming back to this to improve it in the future. But you might be asking, how does this scarecrow shoot at the enemy? Well, I also took a while to figure that out. I drew up a few concepts with the guns on the arms, but I finally landed on making the head transform into a gun when the enemy is nearby. Modeling this turned out to not be so hard. I actually liked the final result. All that was left to do was add a simple rotation script when it fires, and with that, I think we have a very good start to making defenses. Well, except I haven't made it placeable yet. I already had some code set up to place things like a chest, but as you might have guessed by now, that also needed a rework. You could rename this video, Phil rewrites a bunch of code he thought was good a few months ago. But while I was editing the code, I got to add some much needed features. Before, you could place an item anywhere as long as you had a direct line of sight to the ground, so you could overlap a bunch. Now, I made it so when the placement ghost object is off the ground or collides with something, it will turn red and not let you place it there. Pretty common game mechanic I know, but it was very needed. But now you can craft the scarecrow and place it wherever you want, then load it up with bullets and watch it take out waves of enemies. I think I got a lot done in this video, and I'm really excited to start improving the base building. Thanks for watching this video. If you made it this far, you're my favorite. And I'll see you in the next one.